Hello again. This video is going to talk about how we can ask our data questions and get fast, meaningful results back. The first way that we're going to learn about how we can ask our data questions is by selecting features by attribute. We all know that all the data layers that we have in our table of contents that have an associated attribute table with them. Because of that association to that attribute table, we can begin to ask for data questions based on certain criteria. For instance, how many uh, parcels are in uh, residential land use or how many parcels are have a total value of greater than $100,000? All of those kinds of questions are something we can ask uh, our data based on the attributes that are available. So essentially, we are selecting features that meet specified conditions um, and, again, that have certain uh, criteria. When we construct a query, we have to keep three things in mind to construct a simple query. We are going to be um, uh, picking an attribute a value from that attribute table, and then we have to establish a relationship between uh, the attribute and uh, value, such as is it equal to, is it greater than, uh, and, and so on. Um, so let's go through a couple of examples of uh, how we can ask our data questions based on attributes. So I'm going to go to this uh, project here, and we're going to start with uh, looking at um, Lebanon demographics. Um, if we uh, look at the data that we see here, we're looking at um, Lebanon County municipalities, and if we open up that, the attribute table, we're going to see that we have lots of different uh, data available uh, in this particular file, such as the total population, uh, the ethnicity uh, breakdown, and so on forth, the age cohorts, and blah, blah, blah. There's tons of stuff here that we can be asking our uh, questions about. So I want to know, and I'm going to actually use the median uh, income, I want to know how many um, Lebanon County municipalities have a median income of over $60,000. So to begin uh, constructing a query, we go to our selection menu and select select by attributes. In here, we have to tell it what layer we're asking the question of. And right now, there's only one layer in that demographics data frame, so it automatically is going to select that. We have to pick a method. Um, we're going to create a new selection, but you can see that there are other options available there. We can add to a current selection, remove from a current, and or select from a current selection. Those last three are when uh, for use after you do your new selection and you want to whittle it down with even more criteria, you use uh, these uh, functions here. But we're, we're not going to do that for this particular one. So again, we're looking at median income uh, greater than $60,000. So we scroll down to the median income um, field. Notice that median income has a double quotes uh, on both ends. That is something that needs to stay there, and if you delete those, the query isn't going to run. Uh, so to add that to our query string down here, we just double click it and it comes uh, in here. And if you remember, I just said that every query consists of three things. Um, an attribute, in this case median income, a value, in this case it's going to be $60,000, and then um, a, an operator in between them, in, in this case it's going to be greater than. Oops, let me just mess that up already. <laughs> I'm going to double click that, and then I single click the operator, and uh, because I'm putting in a, a number, I'm going to just type in 60,000. Notice that I do not put any commas in my number here. If I put a comma in there, it will not allow the query to work. So to make sure that ArcMap understands what it is that we're asking it to do, we click Verify. And it says that it understands what we're asking it. It's going to be able to get us an, an answer. So we click OK. And then we click OK again, and then it selects the townships that meet that criteria. If we want to know how many and which ones, we can then go to our, our uh, table of contents, right-click on that data, and go to Open Attribute Table, and the ones that meet that criteria are selected, and we can just show those selected by clicking this button. And down here, we can see that we have our answer. Out of the 26 municipalities in Lebanon, 
uh, county, 10 of those have a median income of greater than $60,000. And then if you wanted to even get a little bit fancier here, we could um, put those in uh, ascending or descending uh, order. And for whatever reason, oh, I had the wrong field that I'm sorting on. Um, let me scroll over to that median income, we can uh, sort uh, ascending or descending so that we put them in some type of, of order. And we can see out of all of them that uh, South London Dairy Township has the highest median uh, income. Now, a really cool thing that you can do with this too, um, sometimes you need this data in another format, like you might need this uh, um, table for a report that you're doing. What you can do is just uh, select them all, right click, and go to copy select it and then you just open up excel and paste it in there so it's a really cool way of getting data out of uh, arcmap if you want to use it in a spreadsheet or database application so that's an example of a very simple uh, query um, and i'm gonna uh, clear that qu this out and the reason i'm clearing this out is um, if we would run another query or run a geoprocessing function and we have these features selected it's only going to run that query or that geoprocessing function on that which is selected which can be dangerous because it would yield um, results that aren't really valid so it's a good habit to clear out your selection whenever you get uh, the, the answer uh, you need so let's, let's stick with this one for just one more uh, query. Let's make this a, one a little bit more um, complicated and add to it. So maybe we want uh, all uh, Lebanon uh, County uh, municipalities that have, um, let's see what these attributes are, that have a total population of greater than um, 10,000 and have a median income of greater than 50,000. Uh, so we're gonna have two criteria in there. So total population greater than 10,000 and a median income greater than 50,000. So to run that query, again, we go back to select by attributes. Notice that our previous query is in there so we can just click clear to get it out of there. And then again, we have two things that we're asking. We want total population is greater than 10,000. Now we have a, a second part to the query. So we want to and median income is greater than 50,000. So let's look at this closely before we um, hit the OK button. Remember I said each query has three parts. It has a field from the attribute table, a value, and an operator in between them. When we construct compound queries like this is where we're putting two criteria together, that rule does not go away. You always have to tell it what field things are coming out of or it's not going to know how to ask the question. A common mistake that's often made in a situation like this is that uh, one might construct the query to be total population is greater than 10,000 and um, uh, 50,000. They forget to put the field there and so ArcMap doesn't know where to get that data from. So you have to spell it out whenever there's a compound query. And the difference between AND and OR, we're going to kind of get into this a little bit in a second, but we are asking data from two separate fields. So it's a we're using AND as the operator. But if we were asking the, the data, um, the, the query from the same field, we would have to use the word OR there. So maybe, um, and, and this would be a different example, maybe we're looking for two state parks in Lebanon, um, uh, county and uh, state park name is equal to Memorial Lake or um, uh, state park name is equal to uh, whatever another park uh, in uh, Lebanon County is so that you, you it needs that or to be able to get the, the, read that from that same uh, field so that's kind of the, the distinction between and and or in um, querying so we can hit OK here and uh, we only yield one result from this uh, according to the map and then if we open up our attribute table we can see that that's north uh lebanon uh, township with a um 
median income of uh, over 60,000 and uh, a population just uh, close to uh, 12,000. So you can see how you can this really get add criteria to this and the key thing is that, that that data is in the attribute table. If that data didn't exist in the attribute table, we wouldn't be able to ask these questions. So that's really kind of highlighting the importance of good attributes and good attribute tables. Uh, a lot of times I always say the more attributes, the, the better because you have more to, to, to work with. So let's do another one and that takes on a little bit of a different purpose. And I think this is actually one of the most practical uses of the select by attribute. Um, uh, functionality. So we're looking at um, the state of Pennsylvania and we're looking at all the watershed boundaries and perhaps you're looking for one particular watershed but you have no idea where on this map that particular watershed is but if we look at it in the attribute table we can see that we have a, a whole uh, list of the uh, names of the uh, various um, uh, watersheds so we could uh, actually pick it out of here so let's say that we wanted to know where Maiden Creek watershed is uh, and uh, the reason we want to know where that is is because we want to have the boundary of the Maiden Creek watershed so that we can use it on our maps so what we can do is go to our selection menu select by attributes and if you remember from looking at the um, uh, attribute table, the name of the watershed was in the stormwater um, uh, field, so that's the, the field that we're going to use. So we select stormwater is equal to. Now that because we're not dealing with a number, we're dealing with a category, this is when you want to hit get unique values. You don't want to hit this when you're, you're working with uh, numbers because it, it's a big mess and it would try to put in every single um, value that, that's in the attribute table and it's, it gets messy. Um, with categories, it's, it's a little bit of a different story. So now I see mating quick so I can double click it. So again, let's examine this query a little bit closer. Notice the double quotes around stormwater, the, the field, the single quotes around the um, the attribute that we're looking for, and then the, the operator. If we hit verify, ArcMap gets what we're trying to ask it. We hit OK. We hit OK again. And now the Maiden Creek uh, watershed is selected on the map. Now, this is a really cool way of creating data that we, we talked about previously, is when something is selected, like we have here, we can then uh, create that as its own shapefile, because maybe you don't want all these other watershed boundaries, you just want the boundary for this particular watershed, you can right click on your data layer, go to data, export data, and then you can uh, call this uh, appropriately, and uh, remember, Export output is not going to mean anything to you in two weeks, so make sure that you name it something that will mean something to you in two weeks. And then hit OK. And it's going to ask us if we want to add it to the map, and we do. And now we have our own data layer of the Mating Creek watershed. So I like that example as a very practical use of the select by location or select by attribute because that's a, a something that you will be commonly be, be doing so that you can create other uh, files uh, from it. Or if you're just looking for something and you don't know where it is, it's, it's a great way of, of finding it. So last, let's go up to this uh, example for a, a few uh, querying examples. What we're looking at is a land use map of um, Lebanon uh, County. And what I want to know first, um, my first question is, how many parcels are preserved in farmland preservation? And if we open up our attribute table and take a look at the, the uh, data here, we see that um, one of the fields is ag uh, preservation. Uh, so it tells us if it's if it's preserved, it says so. If it's not, there's just no value uh, in it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is look at all of those that are preserved. So um, the question that we're asking is, how many um, properties in Lebanon County are preserved through farmland preservation? So we go to selection, select by attributes, scroll down to, um, ag pres and we are looking f uh, 
for the equal sign because we are looking for the preserved um, attribute. And this is where data uh, quality comes into play. You notice that preserved uh, is here twice, but one of them is spelled wrong. And that's just a keying error by whomever um, put the, the, the data in. So we're actually going to want both of these, uh, or else we're not going to get the um, or actually, we want, we want all of these because they just called it Ag Preserve, which is something different. So we're going to first select Ag Preserve or Ag Preservation equals Preserved or Ag Preservation equals uh, Preserved spelled incorrectly. So this is a good example of when we're using or because we're, look, we're asking the question of the same field in the attribute table, not different fields. So if we put and there, it, that would um, cause ArcMap's uh, logic that all three of those values would have to be in that field uh, to meet the criteria, and none, that would never happen. Uh, so now that we have this, uh, we can hit verify to see if it uh, understands us, and it does, and then we can hit OK. When we hit OK, we get uh, the, the parcels that are highlighted uh, here, and then we can go to the attribute table to uh, see how many and which ones. We see that um, 225 out of 50,000 plus parcels are in ag preservation, and we can then also scroll to see uh, who the, the landowner is on each of these properties. And as I said previously, if you wanted to uh, take this out into Excel, you can just uh, copy uh, the whole thing um, and take it into uh, Excel. So uh, it's a, a nice to be able to get that data uh, out, out of there. Um, so that is the answer to that particular uh, query. And let me clear that selection. Actually, I'm going to keep that selection, and we're just going to we're going to add something to this. So let's say now that we know um, which ones are preserved, we want to know how many have a total value of greater than $100,000. And before I actually commit to that value, I just want to take a quick look at that field. Actually, let's do 500,000 because that's that would give us a nice mix of things. So we want to know um, how many uh, are, parcels are in ag pres that have a total value of greater than uh, 500,000. So we go back to the, our um, dialog box, and we're going to put the cursor at the end of this because there's no need to rerun that. And now we're going to hit end, and then we scroll down to assessment is greater than 500,000 and then hit OK and now it will select uh, those that meet that criteria and out of them it's 224 and we just lost one in that process uh, so uh, perhaps it didn't pick oh I should have picked a total assessment let me redo that again using the right value There we are. And we hit OK. And it's saying that it's still 225 parcels. So once we have the answer, we can clear it out and we can go to our next query. And our next one is actually going to be something that's a little bit different. We're now going to talk about how we can use um, GIS to not only query by the attributes and the database, but um, being able to query by location. Uh, for instance, how many schools are within half a mile of a major highway? Or how many bridges are completely within North Cornwall Township? That's, those are geographical questions that have nothing to do with the attributes um, that they possess. So let's run a couple of these um, 
and let's uh, start with a distance one since those are the, probably the most common um, queries um, or um, distance queries. So we uh, to do the select by attributes went to our selection menu and selected this one. Now that we are doing a select by location, we select the next one. And the box that comes up uh, is the select by location dialog box. And this is where you construct your query. And I tend to read these, like I um, try to construct them as I would ask my question to help me logic it out uh, as I'm going along. So we want to select uh, features from Lebanon bridges that are within a distance of uh, one quarter mile of a freeway and that changed on me let me just go that, do that again so again i read this down i want to select features from lebanon bridges that are within one quarter mile of a freeway and when i hit apply those bridges that meet that criteria are selected on the map so you can see which ones they are. If you want to know precisely which ones they are and how many, that's when we go to the attribute table, take a look at it, and we see out of uh, the 329 uh, bridges in Lebanon County, 62 of them are within um, a quarter mile of a freeway. And then we can show the exact ones that meet that uh, cri criteria. So very quick way of getting a an answer. Another common proximity relationship that you can ask about is containment. Uh, for instance, um, and let's kind of stick with the Lebanon Bridges one again. Let's say we want to know, um, or actually, let's let's change the schools. We want to know how many um, townships in Lebanon County contain a school. So we can go to select by location and we have to take out the, the stuff that we had previously. So we want to know how many Lebanon municipalities contain a school. And then we hit OK and it will select them and it makes it look like all of them are selected when in fact that's not really true. Uh, if we go to um, the townships um, uh, data layer and open up the attribute table, we see that out of the 26, 19 of the municipalities contain a school and we can see uh, which ones uh, have them and we can all also see which ones don't have them. Um, uh, West Lebanon, Cold Spring, North Londonderry, Mount Gretna, Myerstown, Richland, and Cornwall. So that's one uh, based on containment. Now I'm going to do one that's a little bit different, and we're going to look at wetlands. We want to know how many acres of wetlands are within um, East Hanover. Uh, township. How many wetlands are completely within North Hanover Township? So we're going to go to selection, select by location, and we're going to select um, how many um, wetlands are completely within municipalities. And then we hit OK. And I forgot to check something. Let's go back. I have to check use selected features because I have the one municipality selected. So, so sorry about that. So we want to select a features from Lemon um, wetlands that are completely within uh, uh, East Hanover Township. When using the selected features, we hit OK. Only those uh, wetlands in um, uh, East Hanover are selected. We go to our um, attribute table of wetlands. We can see um, the result. And if we click here and go to summarize, 
oh, sorry, uh, go to statistics, we can see the sum of acreage in um, East Hanover Township for um, wetland acreage is just about 34 acres. So it's a good way of getting other statistics other than just, you know, um, which ones are in there, but also quantifying the, the amount that, that is uh, in there. So those are a few examples of select by location. Now, what's really cool is um, when we start doing site selection, um, you are going to be combining attribute queries with um, uh, locational queries with geoprocessing to figure out uh, sites appropriate for a particular project. Uh, for instance, maybe you are a retailer and you want to build a store somewhere and it has to have certain criteria. Some of the criteria are attribute based, some of them are locational based. You can put all those attribute, uh, all those criteria together to, to develop a site selection model for that particular project. So all of these things kind of come together to allow you to do higher level spatial uh, analysis. Uh, so with that, this is the end of the um, uh, querying uh, lecture. Uh, this is the part of GIS that starts to get a lot of fun because this is where we can really delve into uh, problem solving and get in, getting answers for um, geographic questions that might not necessarily be apparent if we didn't have this way of uh, looking at data.